Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of Princeton Mansoura University. Our topic today, condyloma acuminata in pregnancy. It's a very interesting topic. So, what are the objectives to be covered today? The definition, epidemiology, clinical presentation of condyloma acuminata, complication in the offspring, and lastly, treatment. So, what is condyloma acuminata? It is a benign neoplasm or wart lesion that develop in the genital tract and it is caused by sexually transmitted infection with human papilloma virus types 6 and 11. We know that we have different serotypes of human papilloma virus, maybe more than 200, but which one will cause genital warts or genital and the anal warts is human papilloma virus type 6 and the type 11. Of course, condyloma acuminata or this warty legion is sexually transmitted. And it is very contagious and easily spread from person to person by sexual activity. What about the epidemiology? The incidence of anogenital warts is 1.1 to 1.2 per 1,000 person year. Because, because the onset is likely to occur at the age of 25 to 34 years, which is the age of childbearing, this condition can occur during pregnancy. So, this is the common age. For this infection and this is a child bearing age that's why we may see a pregnant lady with condyloma acuminata infection maternal condyloma acuminata infection may be vertically transmitted to the offspring during pregnancy and the childbirth what is called vertical transmission vertical transmission from mother to fetus during pregnancy or during Lip. Okay. What about the clinical presentation of condyloma acuminata? These warts will show up externally around the vagina, anus, in the rectum, or on the cervix. Here in the picture, you can find in the vulvar region, in the very anal region here and in the perineum okay also may happen in the moons of ubis in the vagina and the cervix okay in the anal canal or rectum the warts are usually soft and the skin color with varying size the main symptoms of condyloma acuminata are pain, itching, increased vaginal secretions, bleeding, and dyspareunia. Okay? However, it may be asymptomatic. It may be asymptomatic. And may be discovered for the first time during pregnancy. Okay. In the pregnant woman, with condyloma acuminata, the lesion generally tended to grow rapidly. Why? Why it grows rapidly during the pregnancy? Due to the effect of the hormone, progesterone hormone, which is increased, also increased the vaginal discharge, also due to a moist local environment, and also due to reduced immune responsiveness. So, during pregnancy, there are many changes, reduced immune responsiveness, increased hormone level of progesterone, increased vaginal discharge, moist local environment. That's why a condyloma acuminata tended to grow rapidly during the pregnancy. 
On the cervix cytology and the colposcopy permit the diagnosis of intraepithelial lesion or condyloma or CIN. So I can discover condyloma acnemata also while I'm doing cervical cytology or smear or colposcopy. Also, I can diagnose any intraepithelial lesion or CIN. Many cases are asymptomatic and the condition may be first discovered during pregnancy, as I mentioned before. What is the complication in the offspring? What is very important is the juvenile onset recurrent respiratory babylematosis. With this abbreviation, JORP. J O R R B, juvenile onset recurrent respiratory babylematosis. It may develop by mother to child transmission through the vertical transmission. What is the nature of this lesion? It is a benign neoplasm in the larynx and the trachea in the children and it is caused by a human papilloma virus type 6 and 11. Surgical treatment for this lesion is required for many times during child life. Okay. So what about the treatment? First, you should know that treatment is important during the pregnancy. Although we know that human papilloma wart lesion spontaneous resolution may happen within seven or eight months. But during the pregnancy, you are afraid from the vertical transmission to the fetus that may cause the juvenile onset recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. So we manage to avoid this vertical transmission as we can, okay? And the treatment are determined with consideration of the following fact. According to what I choose the treatment? According to the lesion size, number, is it single or multiple? Lesion extent, is it intensive or extensive? The anatomical side, internal or external genitalia. Patient preference, ease of treatment. Maybe a method of treatment is easier than the other. Adverse effect of drugs and the surgery. And lastly, the doctor experience. So, how can I choose the best method for treatment? It depends on many factors, as I mentioned. Okay. Why I should treat during the pregnancy? To avoid the vertical transmission of condyloma acuminata during pregnancy. To simplify the treatment, we can classify treatment into two main groups. Patient applied treatment, the patient can do by herself, and provider applied treatment must be, treatment must be applied by healthcare provider. So we can divide the treatment into these two groups. Let us start with the first patient applied treatment. This includes imikumut. Imikumut cream applied by the patient by herself Induce macrophage to secrete cytokines such as interleukin 2 and the interferon alpha. What is the most common reported side effect of imikumut? The most common side effect is topical erythema, which may be mild or severe. There is no proof adverse fetal outcome or fetal and neonatal abnormalities in many studies. 
So up till now there is no fetal complication or neonatal complication for this drug, Emicomod cream. Okay. The advantage of Emicomod include the elimination of frequent outpatient visits and the ability to treat extensive condyloma acuminata that is not easily treated by cryotherapy or laser therapy. So, when a case has extensive condyloma acuminata, maybe Emicomod cream is a suitable choice because it cannot be easily treated with laser or cryotherapy. And up till now, it is proved to carry no risk for fetus or neonate. What about the other group, which is provider applied treatment? Must be, this treatment should be applied by health care provider. Like laser therapy, using energy of an infrared laser to evaporate the affected tissue. Like cryotherapy, liquid ni nitrogen to freeze and decal tissue. Like photodynamic therapy, like trichloroacetic acid, chemical coagulation of cellular protein by a trichloroacetic acid. Like local hyperthermia using laser or lamps or hot water, like surgical excision by scalp or scissor, like electrosurgery using the electrical energy to destroy lesions. So this is different lines of treatment but must be given by healthcare provider. Okay? okay. Which one is the best line? As I mentioned in both groups, applied by the patient or applied by healthcare provider, we can say cryotherapy is the best choice during the pregnancy. It is inexpensive, less painful, and safe, and considered the first line therapy in pregnancy. So, cryotherapy is considered a first line therapy in pregnancy. What about laser therapy? It's the second choice to Okay, so you should speak with the patient with different lines of treatment and choose the best one for her. So, cryotherapy is the first line therapy in pregnancy, laser therapy is the second choice. Emicomod cream can be considered in cases with extensive condyloma acuminata that is not easily treated by cryotherapy or laser therapy. What is the treatment that shouldn't be used in pregnant women in case of condyloma acuminata in pregnancy? I shouldn't use interferon, 5 fluorouracil cream, cedofovir, synectaquine, budofilin resin, and budofilotoxin. All of these shouldn't be used in a pregnant woman. Okay, we know that bodofilin resin and bodofilotoxin commonly used in non-pregnant lady with condyloma acuminata for cosmetic treatment. But we are talking here about pregnant lady with condyloma acuminata, so please avoid use using the interferon, 5-fluorouracil cream, bodofilin resin, and bodofilotoxin and cedofovir, all of them is contraindicated during pregnancy. What about mode of delivery? Should I do cesarean section because the lady has a genital condyloma acuminata to avoid the, the vertical transmission during labor, for example? No, we shouldn't do cesarean section because it was found that cesarean section are not going to decrease the occurrence of juvenile 
onset recurrent respiratory babylomatosis. So, cesarean delivery is not recommended to prevent mother to child transmission of human babyloma virus. The effectiveness of cesarean delivery in preventing the development of juvenile onset recurrent respiratory babylomatosis and the mother to child transmission of human babyloma virus is uncertain. And it was found that human babyloma virus transmission also occur in caesarean delivery. And the prophylactic caesarean delivery has only a very limited cost-benefit ratio. Okay? However, you may need caesarean delivery in certain special cases with condyloma accumulata in pregnancy. If the pelvic outlet is obstructed or if vaginal delivery would result in excessive bleeding. So this is the two indication as regard condyloma accumulata in pregnancy in which cesarean section is indicated. Either pelvic outlet is obstructed or vaginal or vaginal delivery would result in excessive bleeding. So let us go to the last slides. The take home message. Condyloma acuminata is a benign neoplasm or wart lesion or bacillial lesion that develops in the genital tract and the inner region and it is caused by infection with human babyloma virus type 6 and 11. Maternal history of condyloma acuminata in pregnancy is a strong risk factor for the development of juvenile onset recurrent respiratory babylomatosis. The treatment methods described in the literature were laser therapy, cryotherapy, emukumut, photodynamic therapy, trichloroacetic acid, and the local hyperthermia, and the electrosurgical method. The most effective treatment remains unclear. Various factors must be considered when deciding how to treat. As I mentioned before, according to the size, the size, the extension of the lesion, and so on, so on, so the experience of the doctor, the preference of the patient, the more, the more safe, and so on. Based on the available data of literature, Cryotherapy is recommended as the first choice treatment and the laser therapy as the second choice treatment. Imikumut can be considered in cases such as extensive condyloma accumulata that is not easily treated by cryotherapy or laser therapy. The effectiveness of caesarean delivery in preventing the development of juvenile onset recurrent respiratory babylomatosis and the mother-to-child transmission of human babyloma virus is uncertain. This is the end of my lecture today. Thank you, everybody. This is my three scientific site, one for Amazon for my box here, and one for my YouTube channel with where you can find different ob lectures, and the third one in blogspot.com where you can find also a picture of my patients and art. My best wishes for all of you.